This is the Powerlifting America podcast, and today we've got a quick check-in with rising star in the 66 kilo weight class, Brian Lee. Brian was five days out from Powerlifting America Nationals when we recorded this, and he gives me the full scoop on his recent training and the possibly monstrous total that he could put up at PA Nats if he has to. Don't forget, you'll be able to catch Brian's epic battle with Jonathan Garcia and Rodrigo Manzo at PA Nats live on the SBD Apparel YouTube account. Thank you to SBD and Aleko for their continued partnership with Powerlifting America. If you're looking to compete in drug-tested powerlifting, whether you're just starting out or want to compete with the best in the world, make sure you go to powerlifting dash america.com become a member and check out our event page for all of our upcoming events and our store page for pa merch now with that let's get to our quick check-in with brian lee all right what's up i'm with 66 kilo rising star brian lee here welcome to the powerlifting america podcast hello paul it's a pleasure of being on the show thanks for having me of course uh i know this is a quick update from you uh what, what we're going to call a quick athlete check-in um, so we'll be respectful of your time and not go for too long here. We'll just kind of get straight to the facts. Um, so first and foremost, uh, in order to make it onto us national team upcoming at nationals here in four days, you need to hit a 702.5 kilo total. Um, you've done 705 most recently in your first meet with power of America. And you've also done 710 earlier this year as well. And first thing I want to get is just how confident are you that you're going to come into power of America nationals in four days and secure the qualifying total to make it onto the U S national team. Yeah. I mean, I mean, just being straight up, I think I'm very confident of hitting the Carpino total. Um, I think it'll just come down to, you know, um, who's going to be one, who's going to be two. Um, but I think, you know, it's very possible there will be more than one person hitting the Carpino total as well. Um, so I think it'll be a, a great matchup in four days. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, who are you looking at as your main competitor for in this weight class? Um, I mean, I think just going off raw facts, I think, uh, Jonathan Garcia, um, probably be a very good matchup. Um, he has a great subtotal. Um, and I think, you know, game plan is just try to keep it close and squat and bench and then just deadlift, uh, what I need to. Yeah. So, so talking about your deadlift, like you've got an absolutely massive deadlift. Um, I think recently in training, you did a 322 and a half kilo deadlift, which your best in competition is 305. So, I mean, you, it looks like you could put like 15 kilos on your total, um, which, you know, 15, 15 or wait, I'm sorry. I had the wrong number there. Your best, your best deadlift in competition is a 307.5. Is that right? Yeah. And you um, did, yes. And you did a 322.5 kilo, uh, deadlift recently in training. So it's looking like, you know, you could easily, that's, that's like about a 15 kilo PR that you could be putting up on your total. Um, if you were to do that, that would push you well into like the 720 range. And of course, you know, you only need a 702 to secure the Carpino total, but a 720 would put you into historical territory for the all time world record, uh, by a, a 66 kilo lifter. Is that something that you think you might be trying to target at this meet? Or is that a longer term goal for you? No, I think uh, this meet for sure. That's something on my mind. I think, you know, last meet, the 705 I attempted was super close. I just barely missed that lockout. I think it was very doable that day as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then going to that meet I had back in December, I did have a little bit of like a chest issue that recently I just got resolved. So I think my bench um, is a bit higher than it was as that bench I did in December was a lot lower than not a lot lower, but I think it was like seven and a half keys uh, below my meet PR. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, you know, being able to bring my squat up, which I think um, this prep has been really good for squats uh, for sure. And then just being healthy on bench will also help add to my total a little bit on top of, you know, whatever I can pull from my third deadlift. Okay. Yeah. And it looks like you recently did a 257 in training on squat, your best in competitions, 245. So again, we're talking like another 10 keys. Uh, uh, we're talking 10 there, maybe 15 on deadlift, maybe another five. I mean, what are we talking about here, man? Like you're, you're, you could pace for something like a seven thirty. Um, and I mean, obviously you already said you're going to pull for the win. You're going to secure the, the, the qualifying total and pull for the win. And Jonathan is going to be right there on your heels. So it's not like you're going to be able to just YOLO your deadlift and try mm -hmm. to pull for something like a seven thirty total seven forty. But 
I mean, man, what is going on? You're, you're the, the world record total is seven ten point five. So, I mean, I think at a minimum you're looking like you're going to be going over the world record, open world record total, and you're still a junior. Yeah. I mean, I think probably, you know, the biggest advantage for me, I feel like, um, I mean, some people know about it, um, but I just train very light. I mean, my usual training weight is usually around like 145 to 147. Uh, So going to meets, I don't really need to do a drastic cut. So I don't think my strength really fluctuates too much from like training and an actual competition. Um, So I think that's a pretty big advantage I have going to meets. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I think just recently, just like, at least for training wise, I think a lot of different technical changes on my lifts have kind of like broken through some plateaus i think for deadlifts i used to have like pretty bad like lockout issues i'd always miss on grip i think one of the things i changed was just kind of stop overextending at the top because i felt like i was just making the lift harder than i needed to um so i'd actually finish the lift earlier but i would just keep pulling and that Mm -hmm. would just cause my grip to slip so i think that was one of the major changes i made to my deadlifts which kind of blew it up a little bit i think before that i was struggling with like 661 Um, pretty commonly always miss it with grip but now um, I think that's a pretty common weight that I could do um, Mm -hmm. pretty easily so I think just making technical changes here and there for me uh, was a pretty big deal Um, I think just overall staying healthy is probably the biggest thing for me I think last May of last year I had a pretty bad like hip injury that had me out for like a couple months like I could barely walk for the first month and then training wise I think I was pretty much like 50% of my max weight and it was like with a shortened range of motion. Um, Mm -hmm. So I think coming back from that injury kind of like changed my training perception a little bit. Like I think I was, uh, I'm self-coached. I've been self-coached pretty much like 95% of my lifting career. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think a lot of the old philosophies I had of like pushing um, weights and then training the way I did was a little too much on my body. So I think kind of re looking at that was like a wake up call for me after that injury. And I think from then training has been a lot better. Um, I think just like the workload management for training has just been significantly better. And yeah, I think just a lot of good changes since uh, May of last year. Well, man, that's really exciting. I mean, you're a young guy. Are you 23 right now? Yeah, I'm 23. All right. So you're 23, but you've been, you've been lifting since you're 18 years old. So you're five years in the game. I mean, you've been competing in powerlifting competition since early 2018. Um, so you're, you're really like kind of a veteran in the game, even mm-hmm. though you're still super young, you're a junior, um, and you're putting up num- like you, like, I'm so excited for the possibility of like what you could do at this meet or even like, you know, beyond whenever you have to go all out at maybe at something like worlds or whatever the case may be, because I mean, you're, you're looking like you're easily going to break the world record by like 10 kilos or something like this, you know, um, which is just wild at someone that's so so young. So coming up in the sport young, like starting to compete at age 18 and not having a coach, like what do you attribute to all of your success? I mean, how did you, how do you coach yourself so well? Yeah. Um, so I think the main thing that helped me out a lot, um, I actually started training when I was 15. Um, I was training predominantly for like sports, uh, and then just like bodybuilding. Um, so like from 15 to 18, I was training really hard bodybuilding. Um, so I put on a lot of mass, I think going to high school, I was like 105 pounds. And then since just taking bodybuilding and training very seriously. Um, so I was doing a pretty bro split is just push, um, push pull legs. Um, and I would just run that, um, over and over again for like two years. And I think that helped tremendously just put on muscle for me. I think after that, before I got into powerlifting, I ended at like 138 um, from doing that split. And then I think just taking that time to actually bodybuild and put on muscle instead of jumping straight into powerlifting gave me another pretty big advantage. Yeah. Um, and then I think the first meet I did um, was without a coach. Um, I just did it for fun. My, my weights coach that I was strong, I should try powerlifting. So I kind of took his advice. I uh, just mm-hmm. did a meet for fun. I think literally just bought like a $30 singlet off eBay, $20 belt off eBay. Wow. Like these weren't like SPD or inserts or anything. Oh um, only thing I had was just like Addy Power. That was it. And, and like, who was I was, a person who was a person who told you to sign up for that meet? Um, it was my like athletic strength coach in high school. 
Wow. Um, we need to send yeah, some flowers. Yeah, Addy Powers was the only thing I had that was like pretty known in powerlifting. I mean, I was squatting like high bar. I was trying to learn sumo, but I was doing like a froggy stance kind of. Um, but yeah, I think after that meet, I was under Dawson Wyndham for like a few months um, going into my first like raw nationals as a teen. Um, and that like kind of taught me a little bit more about like programming stuff because I was just kind of doing whatever at that point. Um, and then after that, I think I was pretty much self-coached for like another two or three years. Um, I was under Joe game day for a little bit, um, I think from like March to June um of last year um so kind of helped me like pick his brain a little bit but I think just like for me like I know my body best I know what works best for me like especially Mm -hmm. training in that long time span by myself um like I kind of know what works best I think that's why you know I think I'm disciplined enough to self-coach myself that's kind of the biggest thing like not saying that I don't you know overshoot like everyone else or like don't you know take a fun set every now and then but um I'd say I can pretty much take myself pretty much accountable um and yeah I think just learning from Dawson and Joe for a little bit kind of helps the way I look at programming stuff now too as well um Mm -hmm. so it's nice to to learn a few things under them yeah man you're you're wise beyond your years here man you're a smart guy um are there (laughs) other other training philosophies and things that you've taken in? I mean, are there other coaches that you look up to? Like, do you follow any of like Mike T's stuff, like RTS type? Do you ever take like an RTS course or any, any other type of courses like along those lines? Um, I would say I haven't taken any courses. I definitely do follow along with like Steve DeNovi. Um, those are some people like, and then, um, sorry, I, I just had his name on the top of my head. Uh, Matt Holden. Um, okay, yeah. Yeah. So some of the guys that, you know, see their stuff, read through all their stuff and kind of just, if there's anything I pick up on or learn from, um, I kind of follow along. Um, but yeah, I think for me, it's mostly just been a lot of trial and error for sure. Um, so that's definitely kind of been uh, a big learning experience just seeing what works and what doesn't. Do you coach at all? Do you coach anyone else? Um, I coach like a couple of close friends, um, just like people I went to college and stuff with. Um, but I would say they're just friends. I, I don't even charge uh, them. There's mm-hmm. some of them I've been coaching for like four years. Um, I went to college with them. So yeah, I would say, I mean, nothing that I'm like, like promoting or anything that I'm coaching. It's just kind of like, you know, something that if I do do, it's just someone asked me to do, mm-hmm. um, but not something I'm like posting on my story that, you know, I'm taking on clients or anything. It's just, you know, gotcha. just for the experience right now. But it just seems like, you know, you've, you've, been such a great coach for yourself that you know i think that would be an obvious question people start asking you hey if you can coach yourself that well you ought to be able you can coach me um so i think that would be a cool in your future um what you just mentioned you went to college with some of your friends what would you study in college um i studied economics and then i also double majored in food systems food systems all right yeah Damn, so, so it's supposed smart. to be like a new nutrition major so i thought it'd be interesting but not exactly what i envisioned but it's still interesting uh to take classes about it and are you done with school now yeah i graduated last where was it two forget how old i am um yeah (laughs) Yeah. i just graduated uw i think in 2021 so awesome the huskies huh yes sir all right that's cool okay well i mean you smart guy graduated college already double major um one the nutrition thing you know, maybe it didn't pan out how you want it, but economics is a very smart degree too. You got to be smart to get, get a college degree in that. So no wonder it kind of makes sense that you're kind of a studious person and you can, uh, you know, uh, study training and, and handle your own, uh, prep and everything like that. So speaking of, uh, handling, um, who's going to be your handler at power the American nationals? Um, I think I talked to, um, so I'm staying with Charlie Yang, um, you know, former 60 kilo world champion from USA Pill. So he's housing me. Um, He's offered to help. And then I think Joe uh, is also helping out backstage and handling me. Um, So I got pretty nice support team there. So Charlie Yang, um, just for people that don't know, uh, we talked about him on Waskar's podcast episode, Mm -hmm. um, the first episode that we did of this. Um, he's got the biggest total ever by an American 59 kilo lifter, uh, 622.5. And, and Waskar has put that on his wall and he's going to definitely try and break it. But I mean, 
Charlie, what an awesome lifter. I mean, that number stood for a while and, um, he's a great lifter. So it'll be cool to meet him and see him there. And also, you know, uh, maybe see him in Waskar face to face and stuff, you know, it'd be cool. And then, uh, also Joe Stanick as well. Um, he's like a legendary handler as well. You know, the stories that he had so good because, you know, I was nervous because I knew you were self-coach. You told me about that before. And, um, you know, coming into the meet, I know that the guy you're going against Jonathan Garcia has one of the best handlers, like in the history of the game in Arian. Um, and so I was definitely nervous if you were going to be like self handling or whatever, cause I didn't know too much about you. Um, mm -hmm. and so cool. You got a good team behind you. So this is shaping up good, man. This is going to be a For hell sure. of a battle. Yeah. Very excited. Um, yeah. All right. So, um, give us a little bit of a backstory of like, you know, where you grew up, what sports did you play and like, what got you into lifting? I know we kind of touched on it already, you know, um, but just go run through that stuff for us real quick. So people, whenever they see you out there on the platform here in PA Nats, they kind of like, kind of know who they're cheering for. Yeah, for sure. So I grew up in Richland, Washington. Um, so that's like Eastern Washington. I moved here for school and kind of staying here for work. Um, I think, Predominantly, um, I did football and track for most of my high school and then a little bit of middle school career. Um, so those are two main sports. Um, played receiver and corner for football. Uh, and then I ran the 110 and 300 hurdles uh, for track. Um, so I think lifting has always been kind of there, just mainly for sports wise. Um, like I was really weak when I first started. I think, I mean, the first weight class I took was when I was like a sophomore in high school. I could bench like 65 I don't even like maybe 55 like I got stapled trying to put on a 25 mm -hmm. um and then squatting like a 25 on each side I honestly didn't even like do a normal deadlift till I was 18 like we did like trap bar deadlift in high okay. school but I honestly never even picked up on like deadlifting until I was like 18 so it's mostly just squat and bench and then it's kind of funny to see that now deadlift is like yeah. my best lift even you're though I've been squatting and benching a, a lot deadlift. longer um yeah. Yeah, so I think, I mean, mainly, I think I was just such a small, skinny kid. I think just lifting at first or just general fitness was just to, like, I don't know, just, like, give me more confidence, just put on mass and size, um, and just, you know, just be a bigger, stronger athlete uh, in general. And I think, you know, once I kind of took that seriously for, like, three years in high school, um, I kind of shifted or specified more in another sub-genre of fitness. Like, I was very into bodybuilding for a while. Um, but like for me, like I just didn't want to take that route just because like just too much discipline, like dieting wise, and then having to learn to pose and then just like the different training when it comes to bodybuilding. I think powerlifting was something I was a little bit more interested in. And I don't think powerlifting was as popular like four years ago when I started. So totally just seemed like something, you know, I wanted to try. But now to see like the growth in powerlifting now, it's pretty insane because you know, social media has definitely done a lot to to help powerlifting. Um, but yeah, it's nice to see how much the sport has grown in like the last year or so. Absolutely. Yeah. So like, um, you mentioned, you know, bodybuilding was like just too much discipline and stuff. Are you a foodie? Do you, are you like to go out and eat food and stuff? Are you cook? I, I mean, I just have a very hard time in general gaining weight. Like I have religiously tried to bulk for so long and this, I feel like I've given up. This is just like my resting body weight. Um, Wow, but I would that's... say I, I actually eat out a decent amount. Um, anyone that like trains with me at DOP or is like pretty close friends with me knows that I'm always the first one off or like, let's go eat out or let's get food. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like it is a little surprising when people talk to me about that. They're like, yeah, I thought you'd be a little bit more like strict with your diet, but I, I'm actually like not that restrictive when it comes to like my nutrition or diet. I just, I'm a very light guy in general. So I just, yeah, I, awesome. I just try to eat as much as I can. And I think that's one of a, a, a big blessing and advantage I have for sure. Yeah, that's a huge advantage. I mean, uh, cutting is is a big problem. And if you kind of found a that 66 kilo weight class just fits you super nice like that, where you're still like real shredded and but you can eat whatever you want. So like the Aleco barbecue on Saturday. Um, you can just go and hammer that with everyone else. It's going to be a blast. And, uh, yeah, we'll get some, some celebratory cheeseburgers and whatnot afterwards, if necessary. Well, sounds good to me. So, uh, that, that's really cool. All right. So one more question before I let you go here is just, mm -hmm. you know, you've, you've been competing for a minute. You've been, uh, competing since 2018. Like we talked about, you've done raw nationals before you've done collegiate and junior nationals. You did mega nationals. 
Um, what went into your decision to come on over to Powerlifting America and uh, try to punch your ticket and go compete for a world title? Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, anyone that wants to take the sport of powerlifting seriously at some point wants to be a world champion. Um, I think, you know, originally after I won CNATS and I want to say, I think it was like 2020, um, I got the nomination to go to Junior Worlds under Team USA. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the year that like the ban came down and then a lot of athletes switched to USVI. Okay. Um, that was something that was just kind of like out of my budget at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so unfortunately, like I had missed out on the opportunity for Junior Worlds that year, which was a bit unfortunate. And I kind of just sat in the back burner for a while. And I think, you know, after um, my last meet, I did States um, before I did the qualifier meet for PA. I think, you know, that's something that like kind of resurfaced for me. And was like, I, I think, you know, if there was ever a time, it'd be now, like, this is some of the best I felt. This is the strongest I've been, you know, and I was just in a really good position. So I thought, you know, why not take that back and see if I can, you know, become a world champion. Yeah. I mean, you put up a 710 and you're looking out um, around that time and, you know, uh, open worlds had already happened and, and, you know, uh, that would have won you a gold medal in the open division at worlds, you know, you'd be a world open world champion. Um, if you put that 710 up in South Africa this summer. Um, so, so definitely I could see you would be tempting. Um, if so, let's say everything goes according to plan, you total like 740 or something crazy, 730 or something this weekend, Jonathan, hopefully totals like just two and a half kilos less and is right there with you. Um, are you going to go, do you, are you going to want to go to both of the world championships, um, go to open worlds and then also go to junior worlds after that? Or will you just stick with open worlds and see how it goes? Um, I think I just stick with open worlds right now. I think, you know, taking two international trips a year, it might be a little much for me. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think, yeah, I think my original plan is just open worlds, but if, you know, junior worlds provides a pretty good opportunity, I think, you know, it's something I definitely consider. All right. All right. Well, it's good to know, man. Um, yeah, I mean, you never know you got, I mean, pretty much no matter what happens at this meet, you're going to some kind of worlds, um, is what it seems, what it looks like. Um, because I think you're the only junior that's competing in this class. Obviously we don't know what, there might be some other juniors out there in the 66 that come up in between now and junior nationals in June. Um, I know whatever you total at this meet will also will count, put you into the alternate pool for the junior worlds team. So it's something to think about, but obviously, you know, uh, you got your sights set on the open world team, no more juniors for you. Um, I'm really excited for you, man. Um, I know you, you put up like a 740 recently, like in training, you, your training total for the week and everything like that. So even if you can just, you know, even if you were to take like 20 keys off of that and do 720, it would be absolutely insane. So uh, we're all super pumped to see you. And it was a pleasure meeting you. So thank you for coming on. And we'll definitely get a little bit more, you know, in depth and we'll check in with you um, after the meet is over. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for having me. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in uh, Austin in a few days. Yeah, absolutely, man. All right. Well, thanks. And thanks to everyone who listens to Power of the America podcast. Peace out.